as my 286 build has been coming along, you know, I've added things. I have the keyboard, I have a mouse, I have a video card uh, that's outputting a decent resolution. I have connectivity from my 286 through a nano over to my PC to log serial and to retrieve uh, data and information. One of the things I want to be able to retrieve soon is updates for my flash ROM so that I can update the system while it's running and not have to pull these chips, program them, put them back in, things like that. But as I start to get into that, I probably need to find a way to prompt the user, do you, do you want to do this and you know, give them choices and things like that. And one of the things I thought I would maybe start with is some sort of a command line interface and get that running on my 286. You know, keep in mind, I'm not running DOS. I'm not running IBM type of BIOS chips. You know, I'm, I'm doing this basically on bare metal. So I can't make interrupt calls. I can't do things like that and leverage that functionality. But I have started maybe a beginning of an operating system for this. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn on my system and just show you where I'm at with this. So the system comes up and I have it initialized to this screen. And so the first thing it does is it tells me here is the BIOS version. And it gives me a date and I just picked a 0.0.1 .0 for the version at this point. But as I increment, uh, that's just showing that I have a newer version. And you'll also now see I'm kind of providing a little command prompt, basically. And I can do things like type help. You know, what can I even do? And you're going to see a pretty short list at this point. Uh, and that's maybe not what I'm trying to get across in this video, but it's the idea that I'm starting to put in a framework that I can let the user type. I can then process what they've typed and do something with it. And now the way that that text scrolled out, I, I kind of did that on purpose uh, versus just having it all pop up instantly. I can go either way, but for now I'm kind of just drawing the characters character by character across the screen and it kind of gives that effect, which I can honestly kind of like. It's uh, maybe a little nostalgic. So for now I'm going to keep with that until it gets annoying and then I'll switch it around. But at this point you can see that I'm showing that, well, I have some commands I can run and one of those commands, for example, is I can type in ver. So I can come in here and type in version. Oops, not with two Vs. Uh, if I did an unrecognized command, uh, that's what it tells me, is I don't know what that is. Uh, here it tells me what a version is. If I want to clear the screen, I can type CLS, and it'll go ahead and clear through my two video frames. I might type help again, so I can pull up that list. And then when this comes up, you can see there's some other choices here. For example, I want to update my BIOS flash from cache. And in this other video uh, that I did earlier this week, I was talking about how I'm going to bring down the BIOS and cache it on this or with this Nano. So I could come in here and say, you know, update. So I've got a command and the command is uh, UBF, update BIOS flash from cache. So I can type UBF and let me try that again ubf and there it would then start that process which right now i don't have that process complete uh, so that's not going to work i could also come in here and run one of the other commands like ubcf and so if i do a ubcf that's update the bios cache and flash so the idea is pull the bios from the pc down to my nano get it ready and then get it updated onto the flash and for now i'm just giving a message showing that i recognize that's what the user wants to do now on my pc computer here i'm going to connect using this little interface that i've shown previously and so now i'm connecting to uh, really my 286 here and, and the nano can log stuff out to it but I wanted to bring this up because earlier I was showing that I could hit F11. And if I hit F11, my Nano is going to check with the PC and say, do you have an updated BIOS? And the PC says, well, yeah, I do. The one you've got is from a certain date, uh, so the 23rd at 829. But the PC says I've got one from the 24th at 1203. So the Nano says, OK, go ahead and give it to me. I'd like to, to pull that back. And I'll let this run. And at this point, OK, it, it completed that. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit F11 again. And that's going to try the BIOS update again. And this time it says, no, you've already got it. I can skip it. 
Well, what I want to be able to do is run that from a command prompt. So now what I can do here is I can actually type in this command, and the command is UBC. So if I come in here and type UBC, and I press Enter, um, you can see it's going through the, the same BIOS update process. And so whether it went and did the full download, or in this case it at least checked, but you can see it's calling the exact same routine. So I can type UBC anytime I want, and ultimately what this is going to do, especially if I use that other one, the UBF or the UBCF, what those are going to do is update and reboot all in one shot. So I can do that from a command prompt. Well, I'm calling it a command prompt, but that's kind of what this is here. So I'm going to go ahead and restart again just to show you that again when it starts up. I'm going to show the version information here on the screen. You know, a little logo off to the right and a prompt. And as I work on this, I'll be able to type on help and I'll keep adding to this. So this list will grow in time. But that is what I've started to, to kind of sketch out at this point. Let me kind of show you how I'm doing this in code. My normal disclaimer is I am not an x86 assembler person. So what I maybe have here isn't perfect. I'm fine with that. If you've got suggestions on how to make this better, do please let me know. I'm going to go ahead and just take this to a full screen view real quick. The way this is working, the code that I have at this point, is I'm going to go down. I have a procedure so that anytime I press enter on the keyboard, you know, I have my normal interrupt handler. I press enter, and it gets to this procedure here. And in this procedure, I'm going to call another one called process OS command. So really, it's the enter that's going to kind of initiate this entire process. And then within that, I come in and I do a couple of things. I have to read back from a keyboard buffer. So I had to implement, as I'm typing, not only does it go to the, the video output, but I'm also putting all those characters into a buffer in memory. And then when I press Enter, I can go look and see how many characters were filled in on that buffer. And at the end of all the processing, I clear the buffer after you've pressed Enter and I'm ready for the next command. But in this buffer, I have whatever the user typed before they pressed Enter. And so what I'm going to do is basically get the length of how, whatever they typed. I need to know how many characters long uh, is the data that they, they put in. And so I have a little procedure down here that is a get length. And uh, it just simply, you, you point to a string with BX, and it will return DX with the length of that whatever the user typed. So if I typed five characters, it's going to return a five in DX. If I typed 50, it'll return a 50. But if I get the length, then I can turn around and call this other procedure here called strings equal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what the user typed and the length, and I'm going to have to get that to the strings equal along with what do I want to compare it with. And so I have a whole series of strings, and down below I have I'll just show you that section real quick here, a string section. And I have different OS commands. And so the OS command for help is the is four letters, H-E-L-P. So if the user types that and I match it, then I know that that's what they want to do. Or if they type V-E-R, C-L-S, U-B-C. So these are the actual commands that I'm going to do something or respond to if the user types them. So I'm up here, I'm going to go ahead and look up what am I going to compare the buffer to, and in this case that lookup is VER. If it was VER, then I'm going to run out to a procedure called CMD underscore VER. Otherwise, I'm going to jump to the next test. And at the next test, I'm going to check for a different string. If it's not that, I'll check for another string, and, and I'll just keep checking through all the strings that I'm looking for to see if what the user pressed enter on is something I know what to do with. And if I don't know what to do with it, then I'll just put up a message that, that it's an unrecognized command. So like right now on my screen, if I just type um, HH and I press enter, it's just going to come back and say, well, I don't know what that is. That's an unrecognized command. Uh, and so that's essentially what I'm going through is I'm doing these tests, and if the tests end up matching, then I run down to a procedure. For example, this update the BIOS cache, I then, inside of it, uh, I'm going to give a message that says, you know, I'm, I'm starting this updating of the BIOS cache, and then I call that procedure that I've shown in a previous video where I download the BIOS from my PC down to the Nano. 
and once I get the rest of that code working so that I can update my flash themselves from the nano uh, which uh, should happen in the next week I hope then I'll fill in these other two procedures with the appropriate calls to get that process going um, as far as uh, strings equal if you kind of want to see what that looks like here I'm going to take uh, one string that's in RAM so this is what's been collecting what the user has been typing and I'm going to take that string in ROM that I'm going to compare it with and I then basically run through and compare them using this CMPSB and basically I just keep looping through each of the characters for the length of whatever the user had typed in and uh, if they match I end up sending out of this uh, a 1 otherwise I jump out and uh, leave this AX as a 0 so it's just a, an easy way for me to compare the strings and then send out a 0 or a 1 in the AX register and then I know that yep it's a match or no it's not so that's what I have put in here uh, so basically I added a keyboard buffer the the enter key uh, then checks what's in the buffer compares it to a list of known commands if it matches it then runs to a subroutine that does something specific to that known command and that's giving me what you're seeing on my, my video output on this other screen so more to come on that I have a lot of commands to build out maybe this you could call a start to an operating system it's obviously very very rudimentary but I've got to start somewhere and this is what I'm starting with uh, but I think the next uh, exciting step will get my flash updates so that I can just type a command and the system updates the flash all on its own. That is going to be really handy. And then I have a sound card coming in pretty soon, and maybe I'll put a little bit of time into that. I also have some updated resistors. I'm going to change out my VGA resistor array, that R2R ladder for my DAC. I'm going to change that out just to do some experimenting with it. And then I think I'm ready just to start hacking away at more assembly code. See what kind of fun things I can build in assembly, taking advantage of the hardware platform that I've built here. That's all I have for now. Questions, comments below. Uh, again, always appreciate the feedback. And uh, I'm sure on the assembly there's all kinds of things here that I can try to improve. And I will get this assembly posted uh, on my GitHub and linked from my, my blog post. That way, if you want to get to this and just look through what I have and uh, give me any feedback, that would be great.